Well, now we're going to be talking about a new machine learning program that's been developed by EBMT. And joining us in the EBMT TV studio to talk about this, I'm delighted to welcome Juan Carlos Hernandez Beluda and Adrian Mosquera. Juan Carlos, Adrian, thank you so much for joining us. Juan Carlos, can you maybe just tell us very quickly about the background to this study itself? Because I understand it's very recently published. Yes, I mean, it has been work, of course, of more than one year with two statisticians, a lot of uh, data management and so on. But it has just recently been published and we are so happy about it. So it's hot off the press, so we're really excited to be talking to you today, both of you. Maybe, Juan Carlos, you can tell us what motivated your team to explore machine learning techniques for predicting transplant risks in myelofibrosis patients. And how does this model improve upon traditional prognostic tools? OK, well, I've been working in myelofibrosis in general for many years. And I've been using with Adrian a machine learning techniques in, in the setting of non-transplantation with conventional drug therapies. And we um, make this type of studies and we notice that they actually are very good in predicting outcomes, uh, better than conventional risk models. And then I noticed that being also in the transplant, there was scarce uh, models that were used in clinical practice and they had some limitations. So I thought perhaps with this methodology we could uh, improve that. And then of course we have the EBNT data set which is excellent because we have many variables and we have, we have all the complexity of real life uh, approach to the transplant with recent, for instance, uh, a preidentical transplant uh, newer uh, prophylaxis for lapsus disease, all this was there and then we have uh, this new uh, methodology to, to apply to that. I thought it was a good opportunity to join this. So Adrian, let me bring you in now. Your study identified 25% of patients as high risk compared with 10% using the traditional models. How can this enhanced identification impact clinical decision making? Well, uh the decision to make an allogenic stem cell transplantation to a particular patient, uh, in particular to a myelofibrosis patient, is mostly driven by uh, expert committees that work together in uh, transplant units in hospitals. And this is mostly um, based on, on personal and professional opinion uh, making about disease prognosis, but also on our perspectives uh, about toxicity management and, and long-term uh, effects. So there, there was a, a limitation uh, on uh, the, uh, about the fact that we need a data-driven approach that can not substitute our clinical judgment, but uh, enhance our decision process. So Juan Carlos, how do you envision clinicians integrating this machine learning model into current treatment planning for myelofibrosis patients? Now it's a tiny myelofibrosis where we have, many, we have many clinical trials. There are very new drugs with the promising of maybe disease modifying the, 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 the treatment of this disease. And and transplant, on the other hand, is the only curative treatment. But you only have one opportunity. I mean, it's, it's, it's very risky. And so it's, it's, it's very important to have an informed decision and also to share this with the patient. That's very important. So I think with this tool, we have far more accurate and refined information of what is the risk of transplant at a particular time point. And I think we can discuss this uh, with the patient and have a more comprehensive idea of what is going on. So I think it's the right moment actually when now that we have clinical trials, new drugs, to have this second part, what is the transplant going to provide to this particular patient? Adrian, you want to add to that? We've developed a web application for this tool, which is hosted in the EBMT uh, uh, webpage and the Spanish group of myelofibrosis webpage. And this tool has been uh, purposefully designed to be applicable, applicable worldwide because it does not uh, comprise complex information. It has no molecular annotation, for example. It's quite straightforward to use and that enhances the accessibility to precision medicine in any hospital. Maybe just to finish, you could both give me just a short sentence on, on how you're feeling about the future, because this is very much a, a breakthrough study, isn't it? How excited are you and how much of a breakthrough is it? I completely agree. I mean, I think this, this study is going to set the path to application of machine learning in many other diseases, hematologic diseases, completely. 
Um, I think we have to learn about how to apply them. I think probably they, they would need to be refined, they would be, need to be updated with new information because in the, for instance, in the transplantation field, every four or five years there is a big change there, so the data is not the same, so the outcomes are not the same, but I think it's, uh, as you said, it's a, it's a, it's a very, very, uh, it's a complete change and, and I think I'm very enthusiastic about participating in this, actually. Adrian, just to finish with oh, you. Oh, I'm really uh, excited because as a, a guy who is dedicated as hematologist to do AI developments in, in, in the field, this is like a breakthrough. I mean, it's probably, uh, we are probably moving towards a, a change in paradigm in data-driven approaches for uh, hem hematological patients. And I think having such a big project uh, coined by the EVMT as an official project, uh, we using machine learning to guide our daily routine mm -hmm. uh, decision making, it's uh, just exciting. Well, many congratulations and thank you both for coming and joining us in the EBMT TV studio and for sharing such a, a newly published study. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.